have his reaction to the day's news. Um, I've got, uh, for the government this morning, the Exchequer Secretary to the Treasury, Gareth Davis. Very good morning to good you. Morning. Um, I want to start off talking about uh, Gaza, because Israel has announced that it's approved the opening of two new humanitarian routes to, into Gaza to allow more aid into the territory. Is that something that you welcome? Of course, we welcome it. Uh, the Prime Minister has been very clear that too many civilians have died already and not enough aid is getting through. We've consistently said that we want to uh, unblock any uh, issues with aid getting in. We've already committed, I think, £100 million of aid to Gaza ourselves. Um, and we've worked with international partners on things like a maritime corridor from Cyprus to bring in additional aid. So absolutely, we welcome this and we want to see them go further. The announcement came just hours after President Biden spoke with Benjamin Netanyahu. Was the move, do you think, a result of pressure from America? Well, I can't comment on the action by Israel and the reasons for it, but our Prime Minister on Tuesday spoke with Prime Minister Netanyahu and made it very clear that the situation was increasingly intolerable. We need to get these hostages out. Of course we do, but we need to get the aid in. And he made it very clear that, we, that Israel should take every step that they can to make sure that that happens. Well, yes, and the UK has hardened its language in recent days, as has the US in this call between Joe Biden and Benjamin Netanyahu. Why has it taken the deaths of seven aid workers for that to happen? Well, the tragic uh, circumstances in which um, seven aid workers have been killed is obviously horrific and we've made that obviously clear to Israel as well and that aid workers and humanitarian workers need to be able to go about their job safely yeah. and securely and uh, Israel needs to take uh, whatever action they need to take to make sure that, that happens and working with the United States and other international partners we're also facilitating more aid routes, greater aid packages for the people of Gaza, and that will continue. Well, yeah, and the family of one of those uh, British aid workers who was killed in that airstrike on their convoy has criticised the sale of arms to Israel. Uh, that comes as 600 legal voices, including three former Supreme Court judges, have also questioned the sale of arms to Israel by the UK. They say that continuing to sell weapons to Israel falls short of the government's obligations under international law. So will the government change its position and stop the sale of arms? Well, we have uh, one of the most robust systems of arms export controls in the world. It's enshrined in law uh, through the Export Control Act of 2002. And that places on the government a series of responsibilities to ensure that any licenses that are granted by the government uh, cannot in any way be contributing or facilitating violations of international humanitarian law. There are robust processes in place to gather evidence, to assess that, as well as advice that the government receives, and that advice has been constantly reviewed. So why doesn't the government publish that legal advice so that it's clear to everybody what's going on? So it's a long-standing uh, practice and commitment uh, that, and convention, sorry, that uh, government doesn't publish uh, legal advice that is confidential. It's a convention going back, I think, as far as Erskine May, and it allows ministers um, to review such confidential advice, uh, and that is been the case across governments for so, a long So time. you rule out publishing legal advice, it just won't happen, is that what you're saying? We, we have a long-standing uh, convention that we do not do that. OK, well, civil servants overseeing arms exports to Israel are concerned. Uh, they say they could be complicit in war crimes uh, in Gaza if Israel is found to have broken international law. They've asked to cease work immediately. Do you understand their position? Well, we take advice and we gather evidence, as I say, as part of a very robust process of assessing whether licences that we've granted uh, do contribute or facilitate violations of international humanitarian law. That is private advice, it's confidential advice that ministers uh, receive. It's constantly uh, reviewed and ministers take action based on that advice. Uh, the former Home Secretary, Suella Bravman, has said that she believes that Israel is absolutely not in breach of international humanitarian law. Uh, she's on an, a visit to Israel now. Uh, tell us a little bit about that visit. Was it cleared by the, the Foreign Office? Is she, is, she, is she gone alone? Is it a helpful visit? Well, look, she's a backbench uh, colleague. Backbenchers go on international visits all the time. Uh, she's not in a, an official government... Usually with government. Of the, the Foreign Office, has that been...? Not, ne not necessarily. Um, uh, we've uh, you know, obviously got a standard uh, procedure for government ministers travelling overseas, but she's not a government minister. She's a backbencher and she can uh, travel to, to wherever she wants. So, so do, do you find it helpful that, that she's there? Uh, 
we have a robust process of you know, ministerial engagement with Israel. Uh, the government engages all the time with our international partners to improve the situation in Gaza. Um, we encourage any backbench MP to support the government's efforts and to engage with our allies. I mean, she has one view, others in your party have a different view. How divided is the party over its strategy on Israel? Well, we've been clear, we want to get the hostages out, we want to get aid in, we want to work towards a sustainable ceasefire, and the Foreign Secretary set out a series of steps to get that. That's what we're all united on. We want to see a sustainable ceasefire. OK, I want to ask you about William Ragg, senior Tory, who has admitted that he gave... Uh, personal phone numbers of MPs to someone that he met on a dating app. Uh, he said that he was scared because the man had what he described as compromising things on him. What should happen to him now? Should he lose the whip? Well, look, it's an incredibly troubling uh, situation. It's very serious. Uh, Will Ragg has rightly apologised uh, for the action that he took. Um, but I think it's clear to anybody hearing about the situation that he was in, uh, people react in different ways. And I would just say to anybody watching this, uh, if you ever feel that you're in a compromised position, if you ever feel like you're being blackmailed, then you should go to the police immediately because it is an incredibly serious matter. Well, yes, and passing on MPs' phone numbers is a serious matter, isn't it? Security around parliamentarians is a very serious one. So should he lose the whip? Will there be a standards investigation? Well, there's a police investigation that's already been uh, launched, and that's right that that happens. In addition, the Speaker has announced that the Parliamentary Security Department are also going to be investigating this, and uh, it's right that that take place. I will say that there are very robust procedures and resources for Members of Parliament to protect us against a variety of different threats, uh, including cyber uh, security threats, and that will remain the case for a long time. OK, well, Gareth Davis, we appreciate your time this morning. Thanks Thank very you. much indeed. Thank you.